I recently did a video on Glastonbury Festival, a sort of review. And uh, after I posted that up, I saw that the artist Banksy had um, had done some of his strange sort of performance art or whatever you call it, his sort of uh, happening at Glastonbury. And I started to see some of the reaction to it. Um, now, the, the Glastonbury review will be coming out in a couple of days since then. I've gone and got my hair cut, so you're going to have a very weird uh, thing of my hair suddenly going short, and then it's going to go back long again, and then next week it'll go back to being short. But I assure you that isn't some sort of weird performance art thing that I'm doing. Well, maybe it is. Who knows? Maybe it does relate to what Banksy did. Um, watching some of the reaction to uh, what Banksy had done, I, I, was, I was quite concerned because it's as though our culture at the moment does not understand what art is. So for those of you who want to know what happened and don't know what happened is uh, Banksy, who is obviously um, an enigma, a mystery, nobody knows who's, who he is. He's famous for um, creating sort of graffiti art. So these things just appear and you never know what he's going to do next. Now at Glastonbury, when the idols were playing, he released a dinghy full of migrants which bobbed around on top of the crowd, where you would normally see somebody surfing on top of the crowd. You saw this um, dinghy full of migrants with their heads bowed and their faces black, right? And that bobbed around on top of the audience. Um, this wasn't sort of broadcast over the weekend. I didn't see it till um, last night. And I started to check some of the reactions out and the reactions out were that, um, he shouldn't be making a statement like this. It's bad taste. Uh, a lot of comments about Glastonbury, the sort of people who go to Glastonbury. So I will now um, try and sum up what they were saying, right, in their words. I don't think it's a good idea that Banksy came and released this. What is he trying to say? Um, the migrant crisis is a serious thing. People are getting killed across the, the channel. There's criminal gangs involved. And over at Glasbury, you've got a lot of very sort of wealthy, you know, lefty types who are going on about saving the world while spending tons of money jumping around. Um, and, you know, when you pass that boat onto the top of that crowd, it bobs around. And uh, it's like, you know, what are we looking at? A load of sort of well-off lefties, you know, chucking a dinghy up in the air and it just seems really bad taste. I mean, what if somebody in the audience was related to a, a migrant that had died? You know, I mean, there was a girl that was recently trampled to death on the dinghy and now it, there's this sort of light-hearted thing going on as it bobs up and down, blah, blah, blah. This, that was the sort of pushback that we had about this. And I watched this and I thought, we have become so polarised as, as a nation and as a culture that when we see Banksy do this, we perceive it as almost being like a politician making a statement. And the thing is, we do this to our cultural figures as well. We do this to our musicians and artists. We no longer treat Banksy for being the artist that he is. OK, and, and we don't seem to understand the role that art plays. And what I found massively ironic is Banksy does this. We don't know who he is. He's made no statement about his intention. He has just done a piece of art. Now, this is conceptual art, right? So we're not necessarily um, appreciating the aesthetics, but the aesthetics are there, right? We're not necessarily appreciate the technical skill but there is technical skill there and I want to explain those things in a minute actually should I should I explain that now before I get on to my main point right so let's take the technical things a lot of people go well hey this is the art you know anybody can do that no they can't Banksy's had to work for years and years to create um a a, a, a a sort of um, a bedrock in which he can work like this and it costs money and it re requires organization and skill okay and uh, to be able to get that boat into Glastonbury to be able to get it to the audience to be able to get it in front of the right band and I think in front of the idols it was the right band to do it and for it to release it 
and to be able to make the realization that it will bob around i mean it could have easily just been chucked on top of the crowd and they could have just chucked it off but his idea worked and that all requires a certain top type of technical skill now when he drops that dinghy on it's got to be light enough to bob around but it's got to be heavy enough to sit there they don't want to just punch it it'd be like a balloon it flies over they don't want to be bobbing it and it not create the effect of being on the waves that is all the technical skill it's technical sculptural skill you've got to make sure these figures stay in the boat you don't want them going off to the side like this and not look they stay rock solid and they look huddled and when you look the faces are black and that's the aesthetic choices he's made a whole bunch of aesthetic choices there you know how many migrants are you going to put in how are you going to position them because of course they don't come across the channel in a tiny dinghy with like six people sat in you know he could have gone for the actual real deal but he wouldn't have worked so he would have had to make aesthetic decisions and i think the um the thing about having the face is black which looks sinister and it looks like we obviously it makes the point of these anonymous people that we don't really know who they are and it makes them look um frightening at the same time you know um i can remember when i was a kid in the 70s and i don't know if banks is the same age as me but they had a tv show called the black nun and at one point this bloke person went into this sort of tower and climbed up the stairs and they opened up this trap door and there was a seat rocking around like this and as it turned around it was this nun with a completely black face and the nun got up and smashed the person in the thing and it blacked out and i was terrified by this um, we get the idea of death we get the idea of mystery of it's, it's very sinister and that's the aesthetic d decision he's made he could have made those faces white it could have just made them generic faces like masks but he's made aesthetic decisions. So you can see there's a technical aspect of delivering this art and there is an aesthetic there. There always is with art. But what I found so fascinating is the way it was treated as though they assumed the intention of the artist and then they assumed they could critique the intention of the artist, not realising that every single programme had been lit up. When you went onto YouTube, it had lit up. So Banksy was able to do this thing that reached people. Now, anyone who's an artist will know that that is the hardest thing to do. And he's done something and it creates division and it creates discussion. And I watched three videos where they were critiquing it, mainly on the right wing, to be honest. And I didn't like it. And um, I thought, this is really odd because you are there raising a whole bunch of questions about the migrant crisis right now if you look at what's going on we are in a general election in the uk right um in three days we'll all be voting now um the conservative party is in tatters the labor's going to get in but um uh nigel farage has stepped forward he suddenly uh, left his desk at gb news and he stepped forward uh, making the migrant migrant crisis center stage okay and a lot of people will be voting reform, which most likely won't put reform into power. But what it will do is destroy the Conservative Party. OK, um, a lot of people feel very strongly about the migrant crisis. And the migrant crisis, more than anything else, divides the left from the right. OK, um, so when people saw this and they critiqued it, they went, why is it? that we have to see this boat bobbing it down. It's very bad taste. You're at a pop song, you know, pop concert where everyone's happy and they're all jumping around. And there's this, this boat stuck on the top of this crowd, right? And it's bobbing around and everyone's having a good time and they're all, they're all comfortable and they're all a bit lefty and they're all, they're all pro-migrant crisis. But look at them, they're, they're in, their, in their, you know, enjoyment, they're passing around. They think it just looks in bad taste. And I thought, yep. Look what you've just said. This is what art does. Banksy has hit a goal artistically because everyone's talking about this and everybody's asking questions and it's exposing a whole bunch of things about this country. It's exposing a whole bunch of things critical about the left, you know, that the left are basically actually now the sort of educated elite um, and they are virtual signaling all the time and they're stupid in the way that they virtual signal and they don't realise what they're doing when they are supporting the migrants that are coming over. Um, and so it's critical of the 
the left, but it's also critical of the right who are saying we shouldn't let these people in. You know, and that, that idea that I said of death that hangs over that boat, right? Um, the, 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 the right, what are they doing about these people? They're appearing from nowhere and they're sailing on this, this sea, this sea of joy, you know, wanting to come to our country from a place where they're being pers persecuted, perhaps. And so I felt that Banksy was able with this piece of art to um, go to the heart of the matter culturally about what's happening in the UK. Released at Glastonbury, Glastonbury having a very special place in sort of English esoteric law, right? And what I found very profound was the fact that that audience um, were part of the, the, the artwork. And that's very interesting. A sea of people. That the sea is made out of people, right? That um, those people are in a place of, um, how could we say, uh, of privilege almost. They, they're at Glastonbury, they're in the heart of England and they're enjoying themselves. And, and when people go to concerts, right, people crowd surf. Now, I can remember going to see Dave Lee Roth at um, uh, Birmingham NEC in around about 1989, I would say. And he did California Girls and he put a big surfboard onto the audience and he surfed across the audience. It was quite an, quite an impressive sight to see. Um, but this is no idea is what um, Banksy's doing because obviously when people go surfing, they're having fun. So when we're looking at that, we're very aware that when somebody puts themselves in that situation, they're having fun. When we see a crowd doing that and they're pushing and they're doing it, and whatever is bounced about, when we see people being tossed around by the sea of people, right, we, we associate that with having fun. And so certain people have seen it, their reaction is, is going, but that, they, those people aren't having fun. They're either up to bad stuff, right? And we don't know who they are, that's the right wing view. Or they go, if they're left wing, they're poor people that are, you know, in a situation that's abhorrent and they're having to come to our country for help and we should let them in. And that dichotomy of against, you know, fun and happiness and wealth and all this sort of stuff. And then these people that aren't of that. And even if they're criminals, even if they're coming in and they're criminal gangs, the reason why they're coming into our country is to be able to access the apparent wealth. Now, it doesn't feel like we're wealthy in this country, does it? It doesn't. A lot of people are suffering. A lot of people are on the poverty line. Food banks have gone through the roof. A lot of people are sat at home on, you know, watching television. I'm one of them that couldn't afford a ticket to go and see Glastonbury. I couldn't afford to go on. I played Glastonbury in 2000. I was backstage hanging out with Boris Johnson and a whole bunch of famous people, right? But um, I couldn't afford to go now. And there's a lot of people looking at that and they're looking, they know, they know that class of person that's there, you know. Um, and those people virtue signal. They want to appear to be right on and hippified and, you know, maybe they've smoked a few joints over the weekend and they're with it and all that type of stuff. And they can, um, you know, watch these legends and feel like they're in a place of privilege because they're close to the legends. And they can also watch very trendy bands and feel like they're with it and happening and all that type of stuff. And we know that everyone that's had, sat at home watching that knows that. So in that context, for that to come in, it just creates... In the end, a feeling that I am actually f trying my best to describe here. But the feeling of looking at that creates inside us a tension between all this stuff. Now, great artists, sorry, kick the camera. Great artists are able, conceptual artists. And See, when I was at art college studying my degree, I was a painter and I didn't get any of this conceptual art. But I, I went through a training and as I got older, I, um, I started to understand the sort of technique of conceptual art. 
and great conceptual artists. And I class this as a piece of conceptual art. It's almost like a piece of performance art as well. And it's also, it, with Banksy, it comes from the street. You feel like it's coming from a certain place. And um, to be able to construct something that is able to um, give you a feeling rather than giving you a message, to give you a feeling that you can't quite understand, right? This is truly great art, in my opinion. Absolutely great art. And how somebody conceptualizes that is, is, a, is, a, is an incredible thing. It's an absolutely incredible thing. And uh, just, a lot of Banksy stuff just appears, right? You know, you go with something, and there's, a, there's a graphic, you know, he does something and it, it does something on itself. But here, he's utilizing the people. That piece of artwork cannot exist without that audience. Now, are they an audience or are they a participant in a piece of art? So he upturns the idea of the audience and who the audience are and who is making the art. Are they also artists? Are we all actually together, right? And the people who are, you know, worshiping the idols and cheering are suddenly becoming artists themselves and the focus of the world is no longer on that band that had some focus on it, but by uh, Banksy just dropping all his cronies, dropping that, you know, um, dinghy on top of that audience. As soon as he does that, he creates the happening no longer on the stage and with the people. And maybe the point he's making is that the situation our country is in, we have to stop looking at those people, the Farages and the Sunaks and the Kia Starmers and whoever it is, and maybe we have to focus back on ourselves and see how we are actually supporting what is going on and what can we do as people. Um, I think what I wanted to do on this video is try, you know, I, I, I was compelled when I saw it. I was sat there going, that's a brilliant piece of art. And watching people just putting it down, I thought, I've got to get step in and say something here. And... Um, but I didn't know what it was it made me feel like. Um, and I'm in a very special opportune, um, a privileged position here because I have this YouTube. And, and knowing that people, at least some people watch this video, this video is not going to do lots of views because this is one of my esoteric videos that I put out on a Thursday or a Tuesday, right? Um, but some people will watch it. So I have to try and organise my thoughts. So I have to get on here and reach into the depths to try and see what it is and I think that's what it is I think the really compelling thing it's about people the faceless people in the boats boats sorry and the faceless people who are the votes the lefties the privileged elites you know I think it speaks to them and holds a mirror up to them you know and uh, it sort of points at the problem that's there in, in the problem in itself and the problem that is now a political football being passed around, which is exactly what we saw. Um, there are no answers there. Art doesn't deal with answers. It's not science. It doesn't deal with truths. It deals with feelings. And, and artists like Banksy, are, um, they're iconoclasts. They're, uh, they're agitators. They're operators. They come in and they stir the pot. And they get people talking. And they, re they get people to certain realisations or to certain talking points without them knowing it. And that's what I saw across the internet last night. And I'm hoping that that wave, um, to use another metaphor from the sea, that wave of interest that's happening now, that maybe a few people will come to hear from that place, and maybe they might hear something that's a little bit against the mainstream narrative. And anybody who watches this channel has often accused me of being veering towards the right wing here. I'm quite critical of it. And I think Banksy's raised some really interesting points about both sides. You know, 
the artist the artist should always be away from politics the artist should always be at the center and the edges i think but that's another video isn't it anyway thanks for watching if you like the video stick a like on it if you want to uh, see some more like this so uh, subscribe most of my content is about music this is tenuously linked to music but if you want more of this philosophical content and more thoughtful stuff and more away from my the mainstream of what i do please put a like on this and subscribe because it'll make me easier for me to make this content if you want to support me over on um patreon you come and get involved there's tons of stuff going on there it's not just a place for extra content there's a community there so come over and join us on patreon uh and if you don't want to support me there but you do want to drop a little bit of money to me to help me doing what i'm trying to do i have down below the links are down below a paypal tip jar uh, thanks for watching and i will see you on the next video bye